So what is an OKR? OKR stands for Objectives and Key Results. The objectives form the what part of goal setting. What are we trying to achieve? And it is qualitative and often set for a period of time such as a quarter. And the key result is the how part of the goal. How will we know that we have achieved this? And key results should be quantitative. That is, it should be measurable. And that's because the key results should tell you if the objective has been met by the end of the set time period. And used together, objectives and key results are sort of like the yin and yang of goal setting. They work together to help focus an individual or a group around a bold goal. But before we get into the question of what and how, we first need to answer the question of why. Why are we doing this in the first place? What is the driving motivation behind it? And in a company, we can look at the vision to answer the question of why. It is the bottom line reason the company exists and is the driving force behind everything the company does. So at the simplest level, goal setting is just about answering those three questions. Why, what, and how. But let's go a bit deeper. What does a good objective look like? A well-designed objective should be a single sentence that is qualitative, inspirational, time-bound, and actionable by the team independently. That way they have no excuses for not getting it done. For example, if we had an objective of launching an awesome MVP in the next quarter, at first glance this might look like a great objective for an engineering team. Uh, it's short, inspirational, and time-bound. But the words alone won't tell us if the objective is a good one. We also have to consider external dependencies. Let's say, for example, the engineering team is not complete and a critical dev role still has to be filled, or that MVP requirements are not ready. Well, that's not good because now we have two critical dependencies. Firstly, on recruitment to bring in suitable candidates and on product management to finalize requirements. But we do have to be practical because in most companies, things move pretty quickly and there will be dependencies. But it's important to ensure that your objectives don't have any critical external dependencies. Now let's take a look at key results. What do good key results look like? Well, key results take all that inspirational language and quantifies it. You create them by asking a simple question. How would we know if we met our objective? And this will force us to define what we mean by awesome. Typically, you can have three to five key results, no more and no less. And the metrics associated with your key results can be based on things like growth and profit, quality, or revenue and engagement and performance. Notice that some of these metrics are opposing forces. For example, you can cut back on profit to focus on growth or cut back on quality to focus on revenue. And the key results can be used to help balance such opposing forces. So launch an awesome MVP in the next quarter could have key results that look like this. 30% of repeat users in a week, an NPS score of plus 50, and a 15% conversion rate. Now, the final criteria for evaluating your key results is its difficulty level. Good key results should also be difficult to achieve, but not impossible. And one great way to do this is to consider whether you can achieve the OKR on a scale of zero to one and aim for OKRs that have a confidence level of 0 0.5. So a confidence level of zero would mean never gonna happen and a confidence level of one would mean that it's too easy. And so you're really looking for a sweet spot where you're pushing yourself and your team to do bigger things and where you have a 50-50 chance of failing. So the idea is to aim high and if the key results make you feel uncomfortable, then you're probably setting them correctly. All right, the next lesson will be a practical lesson to get you warmed up, where we can create our first OKR. See you soon.